so a very good afternoon to each and everyone today we'll see the application of geospatial technology in various sectors how the geospatial database how the geospatial modeling remote sensing data sets can be used for the real time analysis of uh, databases so you can see that here there is a database that has been created in GIS environment that was the database, the blog boundary of 1991 and now all the blog boundaries, all the literacy rates, where is the literacy rate and we have correlated the secondary data of those literacy rates with your GIS data. So anybody by seeing that digital change if we are from any uh, you see education department and I want to see the changes in the blocks and the areas which are having uh, changes in the education system whether there is a positive change or a negative change where the number of persons uh, from illiterate to literates are increasing or from or there is a decreasing trend. So if you want to see the status, what was 1991 and what is the status in 2001, so we can identify the areas where the amount of literacy rate has been continuously improving and over the decades of 10 years, you can see that the area from orange zone has been converted into blue zone. Means Previously, the percentage of uh, literates, total literates was approximate if you move out of 100, they were 25 to 50 percent uh, literate. But in a span of uh, 10 years with the, all the policies implemented by the state government, uh, the central government, you can see the areas which has converted into a positive change. So such kind of things can be easily correlated and can be shown using satellite images. There is a, another a change where we will be showing how the remote sensing and GIS data can be used for various kinds of forest type and forest change analysis. So you see that key, this is the database that we have prepared using the satellite images of uh, forest type and land use of March 1994. And the same class has been mapped in March 2014, comprising the forest type and land use that depicts the water, where are the areas, the forest type that we demarcated was evergreen forest, semi-evergreen forest, desk crops, open crops, eucalyptus, mixed plantation, coffee, coconuts, uh, then build up, fallow, vacant land, cropland and water land. These are the properties of forest type and land use class that we have taken into consideration and then we have mapped the same feature in 2014 and this is the chain map where the changes have been highlighted in the form of various colors that you can see and you can identify the change in the location, the change in the character that is the change in the land use, the change of class from one class to another class. So such kind of change analysis using multi-temporal data sets can easily be done using satellite remote sensing. So you see this is a, a row copies row copies March 2004 and the forest map of two areas showing the change pattern. So you can see that new uh, areas in the measurement of alteration can be easily identified using this chain detection. So what does the GIS help you? The GIS help you inquiring and understanding the database of any terrain. Like if you have got the database of entire uh, India and you want to see the product of only Kutch, then you have got the name state name is Gujarat, you can calculate the total area of Kutch is 19,475, then total number of houses are 2,44,844, out of that urban area comprises of 76,171, rural area comprises of 16873, permanent houses in rural area, then 
uh, permanent houses, pakka houses in semi-rural area. So such kind of data sets can be, the secondary data can be geotagged with your uh, spatial database to create a visualized effect, to create a symbology where on the basis of symbology, if the same thing if we are seeing here, it's quite confusing. And if it is for each and every part, each and every block or each and every district, so that makes the data very tough to understand the spatial pattern. But when you want to see it spatially, how it is distributed throughout the state, which are the blocks, which are the districts, which are the villages, which need special attention in terms of socio-economic development, in terms of water preservation, in terms of eco-environment, ecosystem services, biodiversity conservation, all such parameters can be easily monitored, can be easily mapped using the satellite image where multi-thematic analysis of various terrain or various lithology can be overlaid together to get a uh, decision support system. So you can see that this is the area and we have created the entire database of uh, India and we have created this as a block boundary. So all the blocks were uh, generated and out of this I want to get a district where the top total population is more than 4 lakhs and urban population is more than 1 lakh. I want there is some government scheme that uh, the UN or UNO or the central government or the state government want to give and they have given a criteria that the population is more than 4 lakhs and urban population more than 1 lakh for example. So if we are going to physically verify and check the records, it will be a time consuming job and it will require more than three to four hours to get your simple operation. And if you do the same exercise in GIS, where the data sites are correlated with your spatial data, you will get the exact spatial delineation of those query what you have generated and the same will be displayed on your screen. So what it does, it saves time, it saves money, it uh, uh, helps you to create a digital directory where all the data sets are digitally recorded, digitally represented, digitally visualized and digitally classified so that we can focus on the area of interest irrespective of the state boundary. So you can see the yellow color that has been highlighted in the uh, map of India shows the criteria, the condition, what we generated in the attribute table because uh, we have generated the query on the basis of attribute. As we have already seen, we already know that the data set comprises of spatial data and non-spatial data. So the query can be on the basis of spatial data, the query can be on the basis of non-spatial data. So in the current example, we have done a query. We want to get a result from the entire database what we have generated. And this is the condition that uh, the area highlighted here fulfills those conditions. So in the same way, you can see that nowadays uh, this uh, Google Earth and Ola, Uber are prominently uh, used by various operators. So what is the logic? How does that all network analysis or network connectivity or you're standing somewhere a person is next to five kilometers away or four kilometers away you generate uh, your designation and then within fraction of minutes you get a booking so how that is done that is done using network analysis so whatever operation that you are using in Ola, Uber are based on the principles of network analysis in which we use optimal routing, then finding closest facilities, finding service areas, ranking the networks. So you will see that if you've got a, a GPS in your car, I have a GPS in my car. So if I want to navigate to some specific place, so what I have to do, I have to just type the name of that place. And by typing the name, I might, he'll ask for my current location. And on the basis of that, it generates the shortest mean or the shortest route through which I can 
connect to my location where for i am starting and where i want to go so all those analysis all those uh, search all those query are based on your network analysis in which we use various parameters like if we want to see for the i am driving i have got a low fuel i want to check which are the areas where i can get my fuel uh, filled up so i can search and ask for which are the facility petrol pump i will be searching and i will be selecting it i will be getting the exact latitude longitude of that and it will estimate me it will provide me the route it will provide me the approximate distance so all such uh, connectivity can be done on the basis of network analysis using the tracing of the network finding the service area and closest facility so we have used this principle for our current paper that was published in geo carto international where there was recently there was huge fight between the people and the state for creation of isolation zone the people used to say that that should not be located near their houses or the people have to travel to 20 kilometers to take that person to that respective covid center so we provided a decision support system that if any x person is located in the x area so what is the closest location or the closest center where that people can be relocated so that he can get or she can get proper medication proper treatment and proper time so the gis provides you such uh, a dynamic search real time analysis where this technology can not only be used for uh, getting into transportation but it can be also directly used in public health department where the real time data can be analyzed for the relocation of the covid patients according to its severity whether he required a uh isolation or whether he required uh, uh ventilators whether he required oxygen uh based uh, uh instrument so all such parameters are inbuilt through apps and any person who is going here the driver or the fellow who is accompanying the driver will be using those apps to get the appropriate location of the nearby location where this person has to be shifted according to its severity so you can see that in the same way uh, not only that you can use this high resolution satellite data to create the transportation network of entire area generally you will be seeing that in previous past whenever you are going in any tourist place that you are been provided with a guide map so all those guide maps uh, suggest that which are the important stations which are the important destination spots which are the important fuel station which are important police station what are the road connectivity what are the places of origin where you want to go where is fire station where is forested area non forested area how where the road condition is good where is the traffic congestion is high so all those information system all those structure all those information can be readily provided to the user in uh, real time so you can see there is a fire station if there is a fire the fire can reach to its location using the shortest mean network no need of roaming around and seeing looking into the hard copy nowadays you have a google map you just insert your location and all such kind of real time analysis can be performed using this uh, network operation in our gis not only that if you want to see the urban expansion of any area and you want to predict the future expansion of any area so gis provide you that capacity and capability where the multi temporal urbanization the pattern the changes what has happened in any land the land transformation keep what parcel of land has been converted into which category whether the forest has been converted into a settlement area or into agricultural land or into a degraded forest or any other category over the decade can be easily analyzed can be easily map using satellite remote sensing so in the current study we have used the irs 1d 2d and 3 at least one least two and least three sensors sets 
of 1990-1996-2000 for mapping the historical changes and the changes that the urban area has expanded over the a period of uh, uh, the case study we have taken for uh, indoor so you can see that the urban uh, area in 1975 it was 22 square kilometer which rose from 1975 to 1998 to 38 31 kilometers 1990 to 1996 16 kilometers and from 1996 to 2000 26 kilometers so the right now if you want to know the exact uh, spatial boundary of the urban area you can use the satellite images to see the historical changes that has happened in any major city of india apart from that you can also see the kind of advancement the kind of project the kind of infrastructure that the government of india has improved has introduced new roads new railways new major roads new uh, municipal boundary all the things has to be notified and all such base maps are prepared for mapping and modeling of future urbanization pattern if same cheese if same thing happens what is the future scenario or the city models that is going to be look like so using the satellite images we have prepared all these images with proper layout with proper lease end with proper nothing with proper scale so all a person who is not into this field, who is not from that area, he can easily understand the amount of transformation that has happened over the decade in any area. So it can also be used in urban department. Then urban land use suitability map. So you can see that this entire analysis, the entire space, the multi-temporal, can be used to identify the new land use classes that can be used for further expansion on the basis of its municipal boundary. So you can see that the land quality, the land indexing will be performed where we can suggest using different models which are the lands which are highly suitable for urbanization which are the lands which are moderately suitable for the urbanization, which are the lands which are less suitable for urbanization, which are the lands which are not suitable for uh, urbanization, which are the lands which are existing land use land cover pattern, which are the lands which are forested area and all such area will be used for creation of the land suitability index. So the parameter that we used for creation of land suitability index was land use, soil depth, soil uh, texture, slope, then groundwater, flood hazards, earthquake zonation, road network, railways, land use, water bodies and water bearing structures. Because whenever you want to expand and the city you have to have an analysis of area so that proper designing proper layout proper well planning can be done so that because the government of india honorable prime minister is having a mission of creating the smart villages smart township smart cities so this land suitability, the satellite images provides you the definition where the new uh, city can be developed. Because if you go to the old cities of India like Vanaras, uh, you have got Ilavad, you have got Ranchi, the entire periphery or the core is fully saturated. Not a single penny of land is available for any kind of urban expansion. So each and every government wants to relocate themselves to a new place. So what is that new place? What is the amount of infrastructure that the government has to spend in terms of land acquisition, in terms of connectivity, in terms of network, all such definition, all such analysis, all such suitability, all such mapping can be easily done using urban suitability index created through GIS, created through 
remote sensing with the help of other secondary data sets. The same in detail, we are just increasing the scale. So you can see that in between we have provided what is the changes that has been happening and we are providing a more in detail information about the development plan that is supposed to be done and that is to be carried out in coming years. Like each and every district, each and every block, each and every municipal corporation has got 10 years of plan. What are the future plans? So until unless you are not mapping your existing utilities, existing fast facilities, you cannot come up key what is the thing that has to be done or that can be proposed for future. So you can see that here two categories we have created. One is existing criteria or the existing facility that the city has and what the other proposed categories uh, under that head can be proposed to the government or the municipal corporation so that the urban expansion that is going to happen because of the increase in population. So such technique and tool will be of great help in providing a proposed site in terms of mapping the existing sites. Those parameters will be taken into consideration for creation of final maps like what are the areas which are residential, what are the areas that uh, we are going to propose in, as an industrial, public, semi-public, residential, transportation, under transportation roads, bus stands, pickup station, railway station, railway lines, airport. So whatever things come to your mind, you can use all these facilities, you can use all these sectors to get a smart village, to get a smart city. So not only that, you can also nowadays, it's very common that uh, if you want to see the spatio-temporal dynamics of an election, that each and every day, whenever there is an election date or whenever there is few election coming up in the various states of India, now they will be differentiating it on the basis of what boundary, on the basis of district boundary, on the basis of uh, various other parameters and they will be analyzing key what was the status from the day uh, the uh, population the what is the area of distribution of stsc population which are the candidates which are probable in nest because in india many times there are various parameters which decides the nature of candidature who will be selecting for that particular constituency so you want to see Okay, what was the percentage in 2012, what was this in 2017, what was in 2022 and what is the current trend, what is the reaction, what was the blocks that any person from Delhi is not familiar with uh, Rajasthan. So by seeing this map you can see which are the uh, districts which have been uh, uh, the important stronghold with the BJP, which are the districts which have got a stronghold with the uh, Indian National Congress, then JDU, then BSP, GP, they are various. So on the basis of this, we can state the condition, ki whether you are at a good condition or a bad condition or what kind of preparedness is required for winning that election. So GIS provide you such information that anybody from his or her laptop or mobile can see the changes that has happened in any particular constituency and can correlate with various other secondary factors that are very important for winning any election. So you can see using this we can have a various kinds of uh, facilities like if somebody uh, is from uh, America and he has, wants to see Rajasthan, wants to see the various uh, geo sites, geo tourism, geo heritages, they want to see where should they go, where should they leave, where should be the picking point, what is the price. So all such parameters, all such informations are nowadays inbuilt in various uh, softwares where you can go for and search for the, uh, if you have uh, near to airport, do you want your hotel to be in the airport, do you want at a, 
outskirts of a city do you want near to a railway station what is the route what are the land use land cover in the area in and around where you are staying whether you want scenic beauty or you want to be in the heart of the city so all such information all such maps are easily available on various internet and you can search it and then you can target your area of interest where you are interested in so if you want to go uh, that uh, i am not well i am from america i want to see a first aid doctor my present location is this i am staying in this hospital i want to see a doctor so you can see by such maps i can easily see ki where i am where i have to go what is the uh, potential uh, distance what is the expected time what is the feedback of that hospital what is the review of those hospitals where i'll be getting any parking what are the bridges toll nakas toll uh, play station that i have to go through all such facilities all such minute information related to uh, each and every parcel of land are stored in gis and can be used for further analysis depending on your objectivity now not only that nowadays you will see that various water resource development or watershed conservation practices are being done with the help of remote sensing and gis technology because this subject not only provides you the synoptic overview but it provides you the real land use land cover map of any terrain stating the features that has been created or that has been modified over the decade with the soil condition with the topographical condition with the drainage condition with the land parcel map with all such parameters whether that is drainage stream order a uh, various kinds of drainage morphometric analysis will be performed and such information obtained will be shared with the people who are living in around that watershed so that real time information scientific information will be sent to them using this remote sensing and gis technology so that each and every person who is staying in that district or who is stay, staying in that uh, block or village can be involved for conservation of water resources so you can see that how the people are being trained they are being shown the advantages disadvantages what will be the tentative planning how you have to conserve the water what are the slope geology so uh, you have to make the, the people understand the benefits because you can see that nowadays the biggest challenge is in the pandemic is getting vaccination so the government is trying its level best to get each and every person vaccinated within a given stipulated time frame now even if there is a vaccination in or near to any tribal or rural areas in india and as per the reports through newspaper and uh, news channels i can say that the condition in rural area is very poor if you compare that with urban area why because in urban area the people or the portion who are staying are literal they knows the merits the demerits what the world is doing what where does the india stand what is my state government doing whether that is safe for health what are the precautionary methods or measures that has to be taken prior to vaccination all such can information you will be getting in your whatsapp or facebook where you are located but when it goes to the rural area you will be finding a big difficulty as many of the people are illiterate and many of the person have created myth related to vaccination and that has created a lot of confusion in the minds of the people who are no uh, mature mentally mature so that can lead that uh, can uh, fail the government vision to create uh, india to vaccinate india and to make india a uh, zero pandemic uh, or zero persons who are affected with covid 19 not only that you can also go and check for the oil spill and contamination so you can see this dotted areas are the lines where the along the beaches there was a leakage from any ship that was delineated using remote sensing and gis data sets 
to see the amount of damage that those leakage has done to the uh, riverine ecosystem whether they are corals whether they are mangroves so all the things the real time information pertaining to the contamination the damage done to the environment can be easily analyzed and such information can be used construction of various sites related to artificial recharge sites where are the structures where you have to create pond tank lake nalab and check dams various features that can or that will improve the underground and the subsurface water level or water condition in any area so the satellite remote sensing provide you the real analysis related to various kinds of watershed analysis so what are the sub section of gis land information system is there environmental information system is there resource information system is there spatial handling data system is there artificial intelligence is there resource information is there horticulture information system is there so whatever comes to your mind all such records all such data sets can be easily downloaded can be easily mapped using satellite data so we'll start off with land information system as you are already studying your urban planning and land information system in the current semester that you will be converting all the secondary data that used to have in land records or with the patwaris or with the land registration department now any person who is sitting into his laptop or through mobile can see the exact location can see the exact ownership can see the exact land use land cover characteristics of that area and they can see whatever land that they are doing or what they are preserving or what they are creating is of 100% accurate or not so if you want to get uh, improve the accuracy and you want to create a digital map instead of creating a hard copy map of the same terrain gs provides you where you can differentiate delineate the minute villages the wagers agricultural plots of those land use land cover features and that can be correlated with the ownership name and with that you can understand ki whether that person who is saying has the responsibility or whether they have got the guts of handling the data sets so you can see that there are various kinds of land records they are of same 24 and 36 that has been differently mapped as a different plot but uh, a post field we see that they all are associated to a single person so we will be merging those data sets in order to get a accurate information of that area the same way you can highlight you can check that which portion of land belongs to whom so you can see the parcel of land that we have selected belongs to dhatar singh so all those data bits are digitally recorded and digitally planted so you can see that how this land records khoja you have to khoj pura kshetra area pehchan identification gobna roaming around past say uh, which are adjacent or contaminated and finally you can create this data set so using the various land information system previously it was used to have in the hard copy and you have to roam around that portion and you used to take a lot of money to generate such kinds of database and a portion who is from a rural background cannot understand the english language or english character that's why that software gis qgis has given you the functionality the freedom the program where you can write the attribution in hindi as well so on the basis of various tools that we have already studied in our hydrology subject that this is the various hydrological features geomorphological features properties that has been digitized using the satellite remote sensing and on the basis of which you can identify the various kinds of inlands which are man made which are tanks which are 
uh, man made that is water log which are natural lakes and ponds then which are natural logs boat tag lakes then inland swan national swan then nat natural water log so all those features can be overlaid with wetlands and you can check the socio economic condition the settlement area the road connectivity the railway connectivity the different kinds of river system that are available in that area then meta data you can search then wetlands post monsoon what was the situation pre monsoon what was the situation and finally we can create a wetland where all these features whatever we have stated can be easily mapped can be easily viewed and a real time representation of the data can be shown in the form of map and that provide a better understanding to know your area so same feature you can see i have selected area equals 2506 square kilometer so you will be writing the command and on the command your area of interest will be highlighted on the screen in the same way you can create a buffer zone of 2 km around the selected wetland and list all settlements which are completely within the buffer zone so what you can do that we have taken a ap center at a long 2 km from that ap center we have stated and we have generated a buffer zone buffer zone are nothing but uh, that demarcates the area that is within the uh, zone and that is which is beyond the zone so we have created 2 km of buffer zone and on the basis of which we can highlight and we can search which are the areas blocks buildings uh, that has to be shifted because of any reason it can be leakage from any industries or it can be any purpose that you come to your mind so you can see that how this national wetland information system was generated where all the ponds canals then corals high line altitude wetlands uh mud flats lagoons ponds mangroves oxbow lakes reservoir river salt marsh salt pan sand is water log all such features all such units can be easily delineated can be easily addressed can easily be identified using satellite remote sensing so not only related to your uh, urban planning forestry it also helps you out for your halter horticulture planning and development so how, how it is done first we'll be taking the data set that data sets whenever we are talking about in remote sensing we are talking about satellite data set gps gis so first we'll first if you are concentrating on horticulture so first you must know what are the type of uh, crops that are grown what are the crop scientists who are working in that field what are the crop phenology that over the decade of time what are the kind of crops you are growing because each and every crop has got a different phenology so until unless you don't see the phenology if you don't see the land use land cover characteristics of that area the proper mapping the proper development is not possible then we'll be checking the soil time moisture contained in the area in topographic will be selecting slope aspect altitude geology and geomorphology climatic parameter will be classifying rainfall temperature humidity wind speed for infrastructure development socio economical development will be creating administrative boundary railways roads irrigation markets storage all such data sets related to various thematic layers will be especially joined in gis special database where all the data sets special and non say the special data will be collected and thereby thereby will be doing various kinds of gis operations and will be creating a site suitability map then post harvest infrastructure map then crop determination orchard rejuvenation and eco hall horticulture so using all such technique using all such measurement using all such models you can create a web based geoportal a geoportal or hortical information system and finally a user who will be accessing the data sets so right now we have taken a 
case study of uh, mango orchard in one district for creation of the database so this is the satellite images so whenever you are providing you have to provide the india map with proper layout uh, labelings uh, all such must be overlapped together to your satellite image to have a real understanding of the terrain so using that framework you can create a gis database standard stating a special framework then tie point intervals for a special framework then coordinate users for precision projection datum coordinates precision minimum frame size for nnr gis database tick registration accuracy through rms positional accuracy through position accuracy coordinate movement trousers cmt of 1.25.125 mm of scale then width tolerance silver polygon tolerance and grid size so all such information can be dealt with can be created so you can see that how the primary data of land use land cover is overlaid over the block boundary so as to get the real understanding of the city settlement township road villages uh village boundary taluk boundary watershed drainage map uh, wetlands and horticulture we have taken three different satellite images land use land cover was prepared then uh, distal elevation model using distal elevation model we have created the slope and aspect then forest resources hydro geomorphological mapping wasteland mapping so all such database will be created independently in gis environment and we then will be super imposing it to any uh, site uh, using web gis so that the end user can use this data sets the information for their day to day activity or any scientific uh, communication so using this satellite remote sensing data you have seen that what are the layers that will be preparing through such techniques so first one is will be preparing using distal elevation map will be preparing what is the kind of slope what is the maximum degree what is the area of having gentle slope then what are the area having moderate slope what are the area which is flat then using satellite images will be preparing the different land use land cover agriculture forest wasteland barren rock the uh, open scrub dense scrub the uh, glaciers snow covered area so all such data sets will be prepared using satellite images then on the basis of soil map will be producing a soil erosion map will be which will be say, saying about the various kinds of boundary that we have created and finally after creation of those soil erosion map will be creating a watershed boundary so as to uh, get the proper understanding of that terrain ki what is the water level during monsoon what is the what water level post monsoon and what is the water level uh, during rainfall so all what whether the water quality is good poor or bad all such informations will be dealt with uh, uh, watershed atlas map then we'll be seeing about the soil texture of that area what kind of soil texture is there whether the soil texture is coarse loamy clay silty all such uh, parameters will be evaluated then we'll be seeing the distal elevation model will be creating the various kinds of relief topographical map which will be representative with a color stating the various difference in height which are the area which are at a high location which are the area which are at a low the elevation what is the soil depth whether the soil depth is sufficient enough to hold that plant whether that plant has got the nutrient content in it to sustain and to provide a food and finally what are the orchards that we are going right now what are the plantation that we are doing and finally we will be overlapping each and every thematic layer to the village mapping or the village geo database or the database so as to have a proper understanding of uh, the village information system not only that the remote sensing also provides you the site suitability analysis for grape crops in jhum land area of champai district mizoram where the 3d of the terrain can be calculated and you can 
identify the slides or the sites where you can go for various kinds of crop cultivation and then uh, uh, construction agricultural practices water uh, conservation all such area can be easily seen so you can see the satellite image with a 3d representation so without going into the field by seeing the satellite images it's just gives you the amount of energy the amount of impression the amount of database that is very required to have any kind of uh, analysis related to terrain so conceptually the gis model for site suitability involves the satellite images where we'll be taking the multi temporal data sets along with multi temporal data sets we'll be taking the various secondary data for preparation of soil map distal elevation model hydrogeomorphological model administrative map apart from that we'll be taking the other data sets like census data climate data and from this satellite images and this collateral data will be geo rectifying it and once the geo rectification or geo referencing is done we'll be going for the spatial days the spatial database modeling like zoom land land use land cover transportation network surface water bodies and drainage soil depth soil texture soil erosion administrative boundary slope aspect so all the layers will be created and then will be especially interpolating all those uh, climate variables data will be interpolated and will be overlaid and thereafter will be going into the ground to thing will be done will go into the field then will be integrating all these data sets to prepare the composite layer then uh, if you want to have some uh, uh, language some uh, optimization some simulation based model criteria based model you will be providing those criteria those weightages those indexing those logic the weightage will be provided to each and every unit each and every parcel of land that is used as a parameter or a factor for creation of various site suitability of map of the terrain and finally we'll be providing that suitably map to the concerned department so that they can plan accordingly and they can verify the informations in the field so you can see that how gis and remote sensing is a multi thematic multi disciplinary in nature where various teams can be grouped together to prepare a final suitability map so uh, today uh, we are taking a case study of a uh, uh, area where we are looking to go for a uh, grape uh, cultivation so what we'll do we'll be using the satellite data then some secondary data and other data sets will be taken into consideration and then we'll be creating this geo database and all the geo database will comprise of zoom land settlement the road drainage aspect slope altitude administrative boundary ground truthing all will be integrated in gis environment with the other secondary data pertaining to rainfall climate temperature crop precipitation all such data will be integrated together in gis environment and multi criteria decision analysis mcdm or mcdma like ahp fuzzy fuzzy uh, neural network will be artificial intelligence will be applied to create a to provide a condition and thereafter will be providing the suitable soil suitability index and probable zoom sites where we can go for zoom cultivation and finally all such parameters all such information relating to the various land use land cover categories will be stored to provide the real site where you will be going for any kinds of cultivation so you can see that how various layers are brought map compiled together that's why uh, it's a very tough complicated but because of the various model softwares the data interpretation the data uh, understanding will help how to obtain a higher accuracy of map so after getting all those maps what we have already stated or stated was to give a grape crop uh, cultivation so using this study area comprising a study area land use land cover forest type digital elevation model elevations horticultural development plan all such plan sites will be identified and it will be suggested to the government officials and will be conducting the various kinds of workshop awareness program against the targeting group to be 
uh, and should will be training them will be providing them the benefits and then we'll be checking the development and the suggestion whether whatever we have suggested whether the farmers are deviating or whether they are following the same instruction given by government of india or the various scientists who are stationed over there and finally a site suitability map will be prepared so suitability classes for uh, grapes what are those suitability classes we have classified that into four category that is highly modely mostly and none so highly suitable class consist of suitability suitable for long term protection of grapes best combination of factor words uh, maximum factors where uh, having a positive uh, relationship maximum production with less cost because anybody wants the maximum benefit with minimum uh, investment second class comprises of moderately productive moderate limitation in land characteristics costs incurred for management maintenance and development they are known as moderately then marginally means moderately severe limitation in land to or yield expect, expected until unless artificial additives like a fertilizers irrigation is not given and if you are providing this fertilizers and irrigation because that is located at a very high altitude that comprises of uh, involvement of connection manpower and that will increase the cost because you need extra care and protection and you have to artificially provide nutrients to those lands in order to be and have a good sufficient amount of production and finally not suitable means unsuitable for cultivation very severe biophysical limitation with little or no productivity returns so suitability criteria what was the criteria that we have taken highly suitable was the range means 0 to 5 degree slope is considered under high suitable altitude if you go 1000 to 1200 is the best altitude where you can go such kind of cultivation soil map ph was 6 to 5, 5 to 7 degree then soil texture sandy clay uh, best soil depth very deep and very deep soil drainage well drainage good uh, drainage soil erosion is rare aspect northeast east then for 2000 to 2500 mm temperature is 12 to 30 degree so all the factors they were taken into consideration to classify that land to be classified as highly suitable then again for moderately 5 to 10 altitude will be 800 to 1000 uh, soil ph 5.5 to 6 clay loamy moderately deep well drained moderate south is north south 1800 to 2000 temperature is 10 to 27 degree centigrade marginally suitable 10 to 35 500 to 800 5 to 5.5 silty clay loam moderate deep well drained severe soft waste north west 1400 to 1800 8.5 to 24 degree celsius then not suitable is more than 35 more than 1600 and less than 500 uh, is less than 5 cm clay moderately shallow poorly drained very severe waste and flat more than 1400 more than 8.5 so required parameters and the criteria were obtained from the horticulture department of government of uh, uh, mizoram to get this data done so multi criteria decision support for uh, this grape cultivation we have used the suitability highly suitable moderately marginal not suitable so we have given the ph value uh, for the soil texture which were having had that was having a value of 6.5 to 7 moderately 5.5 to 6.5 severely 5 to 5.5 very severe less than 5 texture was sandy clay deep lay well drained so we'll be taking all these parameters into consideration for identification of the multi layers units for uh, uh, composition and providing the site suitability and multi criteria decision approach highly suitable lands land units with no or only four limitation land units with three or slight limitation mostly means land units with less than three moderate limitation and one moderate limitation not suitable land units with severe limitation so decision for assignment 
of suitability classes based on the number of limitations present in the land area after increasing all the relevant gs layers was performed and gs models were executed in two phase one is for soil site suitability and second is for final site suitability analysis with terrain and climate parameters and finally all the data sets a mobile app was created so as to get a better understanding of the crop health what was the crop cover and the ground what is the crop variety what is the sowing rate at the beginning what is the expected date of harvest harvesting other crops in the field then what is the soil condition what is the state field id strip id type of crop size of crop crop yield so all this mobile based based app and data were correlated collected observed validated optimized and finally a uh, uh, well planned a uh, well uh, decision was decisive for providing the important locations of the areas where the land can be grown for jhum cultivation so you can see that this are the land land a is lease for imagery of jhum land and b is 3d perspective of jhum land what is the latitude what is the area what is the village all such information was highlighted and then the geo uh, tag ground photos of uh, vineyard the area where we have suggested for the uh, cultivation and finally you will see that for each and every block of area what is the amount of uh, land that is highly suitable is calculated using the indices and finally you can see that 51% of area of various portion has increased and we can provide a better suitability class for that area and finally this is the site suitability map which suggest which are the sites which are highly suitable which are the sites which are moderately suitable which are the sites which are marginally suitable which are the sites which are not suitable for creation of such boundaries you see for the various blocks uh, how you will be creating it and you will be uh, distributing it to the local administrative block panchayat level block development video and we can increase the socio economic condition of those people who are staying in that area and a proper storage system can be uh, generated using uh, gis remote sensing data sets so with this i'll uh, like to conclude my today's presentation now we'll have 10 minutes of questionnaire thereafter uh, lms question and with this i'll be uh, closing my today's presentation thanks a lot for listening